Hi guys, uh, this is Aksana Verfine Art and welcome to Technical Thursdays. In today's video, I will be continuing doing my experiments with uh, blending the colored pencils and this time I will be using Icarus board created by Esther Roy. Uh, so if you would love to find out more how the heated surface uh, works uh, and how the colored pencils uh, blend, please stay with me and enjoy the video. So for this um, type of uh, experiments um, uh, with the uh, Icarus board, I decided to look deeper into my paper stash and pull out some of the different uh, textured papers. So I have a really good variety this time. Now again, these are not all of my papers that I have, uh, but so the ones that I chose are Stonehenge White by Legion, Strathmore Bristol Smooth 300 series, Durant Light Fast, Paint on Multi Techniques by Claire Fontaine, and graphics uh, 0 0.05 um, double matte film, okay, drafting film. So this is as far as like a, a little, some of the smooth and some of these are a bit of the tooth, but not a whole lot of tooth. And I also decided to include some of the more textury, more sandy surfaces. So I picked uh, Lux Archival, I also picked um, Color Fix Original, UART 600 Grit, and Pastel Matte Anthracite. That, this is my only really toned paper. I just just uh, to uh, bring it in for a little bit of fun and see uh, what happens. The pencils I chose for um, my experiments are this time uh, wax-based pencils by Prismacolor Premier. So I will have a white, I will have a, a cerulean blue, indigo blue, ultramarine, and um, Eden Throne blue. So lots of blues. These are just some of the blues that I liked uh, uh, personally. Uh, no particular reason, just so we can have a nice uh, gradient. As for blending, I decided to give a try um, including the pencil, but also I want to try uh, the paper stamp. This is a nice soft one and it's a large size and few shapers. Some of them are called color shaper uh, and some of them are clay shapers by Royal Sovereign. Uh, United Kingdom. So these are just what I already had. I did not uh, go ahead and uh, purchase any specific materials just to create this video, just what I had already at home and uh, gave it a try to see uh, how the blending is gonna go with colored pencils using Icarus board. So in no particular order I will start with the uh, uh, Strathmore 300 Bristol Smooth on a cool uh, setting. So the Icarus board, the one I have, uh, has a heated side where it heats up once you uh, turn it to the certain temperature and it has a, a cool side where you can actually um, switch in between. Uh, so when you wanted to work on the heated surface, then you wanted to take it off and switch to a cool side. It makes it pretty flexible in that way. So I will show you first um, uh, just uh, the colors that uh, I already told you that I will be using by Prismacolor. I will go ahead and just um, make a rectangle with my uh, uh, Cerulean Blue 103. And what I'm going to do is just to make a, a gradient, a simple gradient. The reason for the gradient, when it, I had that uh, in mind, in case you are creating backgrounds um, and you wanted uh, uh, nice gradients uh, or uh, and then smooth that out uh, to see how it would look like, this would be a good um, 
option. So I'm just going to go over lightly using pressure one to two in horizontal strokes to cover this rectangle and then back down, go all the way back down. I could have started from the top to bottom or from the bottom like I did to the top, doesn't matter. Then I'm going to go with white and gently kind of brush it off in the same manner. So I'm just going, so I'm going up the ladder and down the ladder. I'm keeping it horizontal overlapping strokes and I'm not worrying about the edges because this is a, just a test and I'm not creating like an actual artwork. So this is a test and experiment. Next, I'm going to use Ultramarine 902. And uh, now the gradient, what normally happens, the I will go from the light to dark direction. So from the bottom, starting at the lightest to the darkest at the top. And uh, with my Ultramarine, I'm not gonna start at the bottom. I'm going to, so if you visually divide it the rectangle into threes. So I'm going to start like about at the one uh, over here, just keeping one third at the next two thirds. And in the same manner, going up and down without going all the way down. And when I create gradients like this, what happens is uh, wherever I want the most amount of darkness, I will apply more pressure and then gradually decrease my pressure and release uh, the pigment, dissolve the pigment into the previous layer. Let me go next with Eden Throne Blue 908, oh, 208. And here, I will maybe like, uh, so I will divide the second third into two halves. And you can do it vi visually or in your mind, it's up to you. And I will start with the light pressure going up and increasing pressure. And then going back down, increasing pressure and slowly decrease it and make it disappear, okay? I may need to adjust depending if uh, I'm uh, doing too light, I can adjust later. Next I'm going to go with my Indigo Blue 901 and here I will start at, um, let's see, at the one third, okay? So starting with light, pressure going up and increasing pressure and then back increasing pressure and slowly releasing it okay so it looks pretty light now when we want to blend later we want to make sure we have enough layers and I have talked to you about uh, bl other blending techniques in my other videos where uh, what happens uh, once you have enough pigment um, that, uh, then it's much easier to blend uh, uh, more enough pigment on the surface so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my Cerulean Blue and I'm thinking that I will start probably around uh, the, here, one th uh, two thirds, uh, slowly going down and uh, decreasing pressure uh, all the way down. And actually I want to go again back up, maybe from here, light, light pressure, start increasing, increasing, and disappear into the um, dark. Uh, I will go ahead and put more white at the bottom and disappear. Okay, so this may or this may not be enough uh, layers for our gradient because what, what we are going to experiment is uh, uh, blending uh, on the heated surface and see how well uh, it blends the pigment. And the other reason I chose the Prismacolor pencils is because of their uh, wax content. And uh, it's known that once the wax um, melts, 
easier once it's heated up it it blends uh, creates nice smooth blends so that's why i chose a, the prisma color uh, there are other brands that are also uh, of pencils that are on the axis side and uh, today was is just for the sake of the video and uh, um, how affordable these are this is why i chose prisma color premiere Plus, I love their white. It's like my magic pencil. <laughs> so for, let me uh, take you through the um, quick uh, time lapse while I create these gradients on other pieces of paper. And then we'll be ready to blend on a heated surface. So stay with me. start blending on the heated surface I want to go over a few things that you need to prepare and um, uh, how that would help you with having uh, lots of things handy so when I, I'm going to try to use a paper stump for blending and uh, I have few of these uh, shape tools so when I was uh, looking at the uh, little pointy ends, I, I think that I will not go ahead and do these because uh, uh, they're uh, too soft and the band a lot. So I'm going to put those aside and I think I'll just keep the chisel um, edged um, one. Now for the stump, when we go from one color to another, that will color your stump so like if we uh, went from pink to blue that can contaminate blue and and vice versa so this is when the sanded block comes in handy you can just um get rid of that color by sharpening it to a desired shape or point and at the same time getting rid of the color so you just do it until there is no more color on the paper stump but if you don't have uh, many colors to switch in between you can just uh, flip it on the other side and use the other side okay so that's good enough also I have in handy when working on the heated surface is a towel uh, since uh, the surface gets really hot now you can adjust the temperature on the curse board, which is nice, and I love about that. You can uh, turn to uh, medium heat, uh, to the highest or low heat, and experiment those ways. So when you don't want too much blending going on, uh, that lower heat might be useful in that case. And you can just um, still blend easily, but um, not overdoing it. So I have a towel handy for my wrists since uh, this is really hot in underneath. Then also I have um, this in handy that will pick up um, pencil lead. Because of the heated surface, when you start uh, blending, for example, with a pencil and almost like uh, burnishes it, 
it could be white or any other color there will be a lot of chunks a lot of pencil particles coming off so this comes in handy this dust brush and i got this tip from esther roy she uses this uh, dust brush you can use a like a, this brush a bristle brush uh, mop brush uh, if you wish so it's up to you so just making sure that uh, all things are handy just in case uh, you need them by your side so what I would do for blending, I would um, blend one half of the gradient with paper stamp and one half with a shaper tool and see if there is any difference. So stay with me and uh, enjoy the next um, time lapse of uh, me playing and blending with uh, on the heated surface. So here are all the swatches and all my experiments on the heated surface as you can see using the paper stamp and um, also the uh, color shaper. Uh, what I have uh, discovered uh, while in the process of uh, blending is that the shaper tool was uh, not as smooth uh, in my opinion blended uh, the pigment compared to the paper stamp, actually it was more on the streaky side of things um, for the clay tool, okay, for that uh, shaper. But uh, another thing I noticed that it um, really started to be more noticeable uh, when the blending was happening on the more gritty or sanded surfaces. Um, I did really enjoy uh, blending on those surfaces compared to the smoother ones. Uh, again, it's up to you how you want to play with and uh, what you want to use, maybe even mix uh, colored pencils with other mediums. 
uh, it's um, really uh, no limit to what you can do. So I would encourage you to just uh, jump in there and start experimenting. In the next quick time lapse uh, right here, I decided to keep uh, my paper on a heated surface and uh, go back with uh, Prismacolor pencils and see if I can come up with any smooth uh, uh, blending, uh, which I did find that it was a uh, uh, quite a very smooth blending in my opinion. I really, really enjoyed uh, uh, all this um, buttery kind of uh, feel to it. Uh, as you can see. So I hope you found it very helpful and uh, uh, go ahead and uh, try other heated surface uh, options uh, and uh, all you have to do is to start experimenting. Thank you for staying and watching the video. I hope it was helpful information for you. If you enjoy watching my videos and would love to keep up uh, with uh, all the updates, uh, please uh, like and uh, subscribe below. I would love to hear any comments and suggestions from you on how you personally blend your colored pencils. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.